You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. We've been talking about uh, the LSU football uh, defensive uh, staff changes and searches here since Tuesday when uh, when the hammer dropped, or I guess on Wednesday, excuse me, when the hammer dropped and LSU fired four assistant coaches on the defensive side, starting with Matt House, as we know, both secondary coaches, Robert Steeples and uh, Kerry Cooks, and the defensive line coach, Jimmy Lindsey, uh, who that's just such a an unfortunate situation with Jimmy Lindsay, who never had an opportunity even to coach the position during his time at LSU. And and while I, I fully expected that LSU was going to hire a new defensive line coach, I I thought it would stand to reason they would they would retain Jimmy Lindsay maybe as an analyst because of what transpired with his medical condition. But as I understand it, uh, late in the season uh, when he returned, he was essentially filling an analyst role anyway. He was working on scouting the opponents and doing game study film watch. So he was in the building. He was there physically at every practice for the bowl game. So um, that that was one where I'd certainly thought that Jimmy Lindsay would remain on staff in an analyst role and they would bring in a defensive line coach. The um, A couple of things. The defensive line coach name that was most prominently mentioned has been as Bo Davis. And those conversations were very real with Bo Davis. And I was told this morning that they were they had they had um, they had cooled. Is uh, or let me uh, wait. I'll show. I'll read the exact word that I was told. Uh, that it um, fading is what I was told this morning. That the Bo Davis conversations were fading. Uh, at Football Scoop has a report right now. Uh, Zach Barnett over at Football Scoop. Um, he reports that uh, sources told Football Scoop LSU would place nabbing Davis as an equal or greater priority to hiring a new defensive coordinator, but. Davis reportedly expected to spurn LSU and remain at Texas. So the I mean that's that's football scoop. I mean they're when it comes to football coaching news, they're at or or near the top of of um of the most respected sources. The Bo Davis conversation, LSU is very earnest in pursuing Bo Davis. Bo had been at LSU prior under Nick Saban uh, from 02 to 05. So he was here for Nick and then uh, with the first year of less, he's a he's a Pete Jenkins guy. Of course, Pete was on staff this year. And no doubt, Coach Pete put in calls and was pushing hard to get Bo Davis. But you know, there, Bo is so well known with Frank Wilson and Verge Osbury, and so many people have been around the LSU football program for so long, and they pushed hard. But like we said from the beginning, the real big hangup there were two pretty, there were two really big hurdles they were going to have to overcome with Bo Davis. Um, one was the money. Uh, Bo was making a million dollars a year at Texas, and was reportedly asking for a million five to come to LSU. Were you willing to pay your defensive line coach a million five? That's a it's a gigantic hurdle. And it's not to say you can't afford a half a million bucks. It's more about the precedent you set. Are you going to pay your defensive line coach a million five and then have Cortez Hankton go, what about me? You know, Joe Sloan, who just coached the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, go, what about me? You know, Frank Wilson, who's your you know, your recruiting coordinator, running backs coach, go, what about me? Um it, it's a it's a precedent you set if you're going to pay a position coach a million five. That was one. It was also told the buyout you know, on top of that in Bo's contract was was big. And then there was also a, a family consideration. Um, Bo Davis's son, Bo, uh, spelled differently. Bo Davis, the coach is B O. Bo Davis's son is B E A U. Um, is a a defensive lineman at Southeastern, and I, I think there was. Um, uh, there was interest, if not altogether a, a strong desire, by Bo Davis to coach his son. Um, and I don't, I don't know. And candidly, I, I don't know that LSU was looking to bring Bo Davis onto the roster. I, I don't mean to make it a, a, a family thing, or but that that was. That was a consideration that was brought up as well. You know, Bo could have been closer to his son at Southeastern, who's, who's playing at Southeastern, but at the same time, if he wanted the opportunity uh, to coach his son, this might have been an opportunity to use a situation where LSU's courting you. Can you make that happen? Maybe that didn't come through. There, there were a lot of moving parts here, and there were some significant hurdles, which is why it was always in play, and we've talked about it being in play in Football Scoop, and I think you know, 247 had it as well. And the Bo Davis stuff, this conversation has been a very real conversation, but there were very real hurdles 
and the money was a significant one, and there were family considerations as well. And as of now, as I was told earlier today, it's fading, and Football Scoop uh, reporting that it certainly appears as though Bo Davis is going to stay at Texas. Um, Corey Raymond still very much in play. Uh, and as I always say when we talk about coaching searches, until the ink is dry, uh, the press release is out, and the coach is at the podium, it is never done because we've seen things that appear done fall apart, even coaches be introduced and then and then renege for whatever reason. But I, I would anticipate the Corey Raymond news does get done and Corey's back on staff. As for defensive coordinator, which a lot of people want to know about, of course, um, Blake Baker emerged as the as the uh, as the the primary target for LSU. Those conversations got very real and earnest last night. Um, I was told late last evening that Eli Drinkwitz was meeting with uh, Blake Baker, trying to convince him to stay at Missouri. Uh, and Baker wanted to sleep on it, and we'll expect a decision whenever he makes a decision if he's going to take the LSU job or stay in Columbia. But a lot of people have asked, and I think it's fair to ask, um, you know, why. And I asked this question: Why would Blake Baker leave Mizzou? And it's a it's a very fair question. Um, he makes good money. They just gave him a raise. He's got incredible job security. They just won eleven games. Uh, they want to build him a friggin' statue. <laughs> you win eleven games in Columbia. LSU won ten games and fired half the defensive staff. So there's a lot of reasons for him to stay at Mizzou. Um, the reasons he might consider LSU uh, in no particular because what I was told is the money would be equal or you know relatively the, the same with Missouri and LSU. Um, family is one. Uh, Blake Baker's wife uh, is from uh, Mandeville. She she went to Fountain Blue and then uh, played soccer at. She was an All SEC soccer player at LSU. You might remember that when when Blake was here as as a linebackers coach. So close to family. His wife played at LSU. There's a connection there. There's a, a family connection there for Blake Baker. Um, you can win a national championship at LSU. You can't win a national championship at Missouri. So that's that's another factor. And then, you know, third would be if Blake Baker's desire is to become a head coach. If you come to Baton Rouge and fix the LSU defense, you will be on everybody's shortlist to be a head coach. As bad as the LSU defense was this year, really only one way you can go. You know what I mean? Like when you're a when you're triple digits in every statistical category, I mean you could turn that thing around pretty quickly. And if you're 50% better, you're still dramatically better than you were last year, and you don't even have to be a great defense. So there's tremendous room for the LSU defense to improve, Baker to get credit for it, and if he does that, it puts him on a, on a fast track to become a head coach. So that's why he would consider LSU. That's why it would make sense if Blake Baker picked LSU. But as I understand, I think he's really conflicted for the reasons we said. The money's about equal. They just moved their family there you know, a couple of years ago to Columbia. He's had success there. They should have a good team coming back. You know, do you pick up and move again? I, I don't know. So we'll wait and see what the decision is. But um, LSU, I, I don't. I think I think two four seven had it first, where LSU had zeroed in on Blake Baker. That certainly seems to be the case, and we'll we'll wait on a decision from uh, from Baker to see if he picks LSU or if he decides to stay there in uh, in Como. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.